Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another dupes video for you. This time we're gonna be doing some skincare dupes. This is something that I haven't really talked about too much on my channel, but I do have a couple of skincare dupe videos, so I will link those down in the description box in case you want to watch those after you're done with this video. Um, but yeah, I just am very passionate about skincare, but it's something I don't talk about very much here on my channel just because skincare videos for some reason do not do very well as far as views go, but um, you know, everybody loves a good dupe. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Um, and these are just products that I've discovered along the way because I am really into skincare. I'm always trying new formulas. And every time I try something, I think, does it remind me of something that I've tried in the past? And if it has, then I just kind of jot it down and I have a whole list of different things to talk to you about. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first product is one that I don't have the original anymore. I only had a small sample that I used for a while and it's just way too expensive to repurchase. And I immediately began looking for dupes for it. And dupes for this product are very easy to find. It's kind of more of a well-known one, but I've never really discussed it on my channel too much. And that is a dupe for the SK2 Essence. So this stuff is incredibly expensive. It is $185 at Sephora for the full size and it's basically a watery essence and the main ingredient in it is something called Pitera, which they discovered back when they were visiting a sake factory in Japan and they noticed that some of the older workers who have their hands kind of submerged in the sake as they're making it all day, that their hands looked decades younger than their faces did. And so they started to wonder if maybe it was like that fermented yeast that their hands are in. And sure enough, um, I guess after many, many tests, that's what they discovered that it was. So the SK2 formula is really very simple. It's the main ingredient is just the patera. And then you also have water and some preservatives and that's basically it. So the dupe that I found is the Misha Time Revolution First Treatment Essence. So this stuff basically has that same Pitera ingredient, but it's not trademarked that. So it's basically yeast extract or fermented yeast extract. And it's 90% of this formula, just like the SK2. It's really, really high up there as far as the ingredients go. But this also goes a few steps further and also contains niacinamide, um, which is really amazing for your skin. It has humectant like glycerin in it and it also has ceramides so it's just a really great kind of first layer to put down on your skin before you go in with your serums and your moisturizer and it has a really watery light texture it basically just feels like you're splashing a little bit of water on your face and as you can see I haven't been using this for that long I've had it for about two weeks now I got it on Amazon um, they do have a Misha store it's the official store so um, just be careful when you're purchasing from Amazon because sometimes they're there's knockoffs and counterfeit products. I wanted to make sure that I bought it directly from the Misha store on Amazon, but it's only $24 and you're basically getting the exact same thing as SK2 plus more beneficial ingredients as well. And overall, I really enjoy using this. It just feels nice and refreshing when you splash it on. I just put a little bit in my hands and just kind of pat it all over my skin. And um, you know, it just helps to kind of give my skin a little bit of extra moisture, a little bit of glow before I I put on my serums and my moisturizer. Plus, I just feel like this glass bottle, it's super heavy. It's a frosted glass bottle, very, very similar to SK2. And it just looks really high end and nice on my bathroom sink. So anyway, this is definitely one to check out if you've been wondering about SK2 or been thinking about trying an essence. Next up, a few months ago, actually back in the fall, I had gotten a little sample of the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream from Sephora, and I loved it so much that with my next Sephora order, they still had this as one of the little perks, so I used more points and got another one, and then I ended up getting another one, so I've had three of these now. I went through one of them completely. This one's almost gone, and then I have one additional one that I haven't opened yet, and I really love this cream so much. It has this really nice, thick, and rich texture that it just, it makes your skin look very dewy and juicy and plump. It just kind of gives you this really nice like sheen to your face. But as I was using the first jar, I realized it really reminds me of another product that I had well before this. And that is the Beauty Pie Japan Fusion Supreme Cream. So both of these products are actually made in Japan. They don't have an exact same ingredient list, but very similar to the Tatcha. I feel like the texture of the Japan Fusion Cream is just that really thick, 
thick, rich, cushiony kind of feel, and both are made of water and glycerin as the main ingredients. So they both just have that same feel. And when you put them on your skin, they just kind of plump everything out. And like I said before, your skin just has a dewy look to it. So some people may not necessarily love that. I think this is definitely something for people with more dry skin than oily skin. Even for me, I think in the summertime, I'm probably gonna switch to just using these in the evening um, to go to bed because they kind of leave your skin with a little bit of like a stickier feel. And in the winter time, that was great because it did eventually soak in and dry down, but I felt like they kept my skin more hydrated throughout the day. But I think if there's a lot of humidity in the air in the summertime, these would be a little bit too much even for me. So they're just very thick and rich. So when the weather gets warm, I will definitely be just using these at night just for, you know, sleeping in the air conditioning that kind of dries out your skin sometimes as well. So yeah, even though these do not have the exact same ingredient list, I feel like they're both supposed to do the exact same thing for your skin, and I find that they do. I kind of use them interchangeably, and once I'm done with the Tatcha, I probably won't repurchase or buy the full size, just because I can buy this one for $13. Actually, um, I forgot to mention price. The Tatcha is $68, and the Beauty Pie is $13 if you're a member of Beauty Pie, which I have been now for about a year, and I just love every single single skincare product I've tried, definitely worth looking into for sure. The next dupe that I have is for the Drunk Elephant C Firma Serum, which is $80 for one fluid ounce. And that is the Clean Beauty Vitamin C Papaya Glow Serum. This is $10 for one ounce. And yes, this is an ounce, even though it looks really small, it just doesn't have all of the excess packaging like the Drunk Elephant one does. So both brands are marketed as clean beauty brands, and they also both contain vitamin C, ferulic acid and vitamin E. They also both contain sodium hyaluronate and the Drunk Elephant contains pumpkin to exfoliate your skin while Clean has papaya. So they both kind of mildly exfoliate in the same exact way. The only big difference between these two is the type of vitamin C that's used. The Drunk Elephant one has ascorbic acid, which is a little bit stronger and it's also more unstable. So it is gonna break down more over time. And then the Clean uses sodium ascorbyl phosphate which is a more stable form of vitamin C and is much less likely to irritate your skin, although it does take a little bit longer of using this one to see the results. But honestly, I don't mind at all. I'm one of those people that is a little bit more sensitive to vitamin C serums, so they can sometimes burn and really bother my skin. And I found that this one does not bother me at all. It's so much more mild and gentle than the C Firma, which I no longer have, but I did use for a while. So I think this one is a great alternative at a way more affordable price and I've just been really impressed with the brand clean in general because they are just super affordable but the ingredients they use are just all very high quality I honestly don't know how they do it for the prices that they're charging but I I've just been really impressed overall next up I have another drunk elephant dupe and that is for their bestie number no. nine jelly cleanser this one cost $32 and I actually purchased this back in I think 2019 when it first came out it was during the Sephora sale and so so I wanted to get my 20% off and I thought I would just test it out. And I thought it was a really nice cleanser. It has kind of this really light, mild jelly feel to it that honestly is not the best at removing makeup. So usually I would use it either as a second cleanse after I used an oil to remove my makeup, or I would just use it in the morning as just a really gentle cleanser when I was taking my shower, when I didn't have to take off makeup. And so a few months ago now, again, I think back in the fall or towards the end of the summer, I got a chance to try the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel. So as you can see, this is about halfway gone already. I don't use it every single day, but I do use it pretty often. And I think this is a spot on dupe just about for the Drunk Elephant Cleanser. It feels exactly the same. It has this jelly texture to it, and both of them contain water, glycerin, and coconut-based surfactants as the top ingredients. So the, the ingredient lists are very, very alike. Um, the Good Molecules also has rose water in it, while Drunk Elephant has cantaloupe extract. So those are both antioxidants, um, which help
help to combat free radicals on your skin. And to be honest with you, I actually prefer this one to the Drunk Elephant. I think when it comes to removing makeup, this actually does a much better job than that one did. It's not gonna remove anything that is too heavy or if you have like a really stubborn mascara, but on really light makeup days, I use this and it takes off everything really nicely, but just keeps my skin from feeling dry or stripped, which it often does after I wash, unless I'm using like an oil cleanser. So I think this is a beautiful product. Again, I mainly use it either as a second cleanse or in the morning when I don't have makeup to take off. And it's only $12 compared to 32 with the Drunk Elephant. So I think this stuff is great. Next up, I have another cleanser dupe, and this is for the Tatcha The Rice Wash Cleanser. So I got this one, again, I think back over the summer, maybe it was in the fall, whenever it first launched. And um, this is actually a really nice cleanser. It has little tiny like scrubby bits in it. So it's not something that you're gonna really wanna use around your eye area, but it's something that I typically use in the morning just to kind of get dead skin off my face. And I don't use it every day because it does have more of a foaming texture plus the little scrubbies in it. So, you know, my skin is definitely getting more and more sensitive the older I get. So um, not that this is harsh by any means, it is very gentle, but most of the time I use something even more gentle like this. Um, so this is just something I use probably like twice a week, but I love how smooth it gets my skin and it just really gives me that deeper clean feeling without drying out my skin. So I really like this, but again, $35 is pretty steep for a cleanser. So recently I tried something from a Korean beauty brand called Nine Wishes, and this is their rice foaming cleanser. So the names sound very, very similar. And once I tested both of these out, I couldn't believe how close they actually were. So you can see um, me putting some of the Tatcha on, and it just has this really thick kind of foamy texture. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it has like those little tiny bits of like that grainy texture to it. And similarly, the Rice Foaming Cleanser from Nine Wishes also has that same consistency. Um, it's actually more um, translucent than the Tatcha one, which has more of a white look to it, but they actually have the identical feel when you put them on your skin. Both of them have a little bit of that foaming action going on, plus those little scrubbies. And so when you look at the ingredient list of both of these, they're very, very similar. Um, the Nine Wishes actually uses little bits of rice powder as the main exfoliant. That's the number one ingredient after glycerin. Now the Tatcha actually has water as their first ingredient. Glycerin is a little further down on the list and their second ingredient is actually microcrystalline cellulose, which is refined wood pulp. So I found that kind of interesting that the Nine Wishes uses actual rice for the exfoliant and they're using wood pulp. <laughs> um, I know that's a pretty common ingredient in a lot of exfoliators, but still. And um, Tatcha does have the rice powder as well but it's way further down on the list while it's the second ingredient in this one. Um, both do contain rice bran ferment, um, but the 9W also has rice bran water in addition to that. So this one is actually packed with rice ingredients, which I really, really liked. And honestly, I feel like they do the exact same thing. So I said this one was $35. This one is $16 on Amazon. Again, I bought this straight from the Nine Wishes store on Amazon. So I'll leave that link down below. Just just make sure you're buying it directly from them. But yeah, I was very shocked when I tried this because I feel like they are the exact same thing. All right, so next up, back over the winter time, I guess around the holidays it was, I got a sample from Sephora of the Biosance 100% squalane oil, and I really, really loved it. So um, at the time around the holidays, Biosance was having a huge sale. So I ended up getting this and a couple of their other products um, at a really big discount because I thought it was such a nice oil. And this one is $32, although you do get three ounces of product in here. So it's a pretty big container and it's gonna last a long time. Mine is right about down to the label right now. I only need a couple of drops at a time and it's April right now. So it's been a few months since I've had it and really it's hardly gone down at all. I'm about a quarter of the way through the bottle. Um, but somebody had recently brought to my attention that The Ordinary has a 100% squalane oil as well. So this one is $7.90. Granted, you are only getting one fluid ounce, but if you bought three of these to equal this, it's gonna be around 23. So you're 
still saving yourself about nine bucks by buying three of these. But these are literally the exact same thing because they are just 100% squalene oil. That's all that's in here. There's no other additional ingredients with either one of them. And I find it to just be a really nice lightweight oil. It sinks in immediately. It doesn't leave your skin feeling greasy at all. I also use it on my hands at night. I put my moisturizer on, then I put a couple drops and just kind of seal in the moisturizer with the oil and it works really, really well. So um, if you don't know what squalene is actually um, in our skin, in our skin's barrier, we have squalene with an E and that's in part what makes up the sebum in our skin and it actually declines quite a bit after age 30. So without as much of it, your barrier can get compromised, your skin can get drier, but squalene is actually very unstable if you try to take it out of our body. So um, the solution to that is squalane, which has an A, and that's made from plants. And that version is super stable, and also it is non-comedogenic, it won't clog your pores, and it acts as an occlusive to trap all of the water in your skin. So again, it's just great to layer a couple drops on top of whatever moisturizer or hydrating products that you're using to just seal everything in and prevent it from evaporating back out of your skin again, especially like when the air is really dry. So um, if you're looking for a really cheap version of Biosance, I would check out The Ordinary. I think this one is a great alternative. And then the last dupe that I have is for the Wishful Thirst Trap Juice. So Wishful is Huda Beauty's skincare company, and this stuff is really great. It has triple hyaluronic acid. It's in three different size molecules. So the larger one, helps to hydrate the top layer of your skin while the smallest one goes deeper into the levels of your skin. There's also like one in between. So it's really just a great way to get that hyaluronic acid deep down in and kind of hydrate all of the different levels of your skin. This one also has peptides in it as well, but it is $47. So it's a bit on the steeper side as far as hyaluronic acid serums go. So the dupe that I found is from the brand COSRX, which is another Korean brand as well. They're both made in Korea. And this one is only $19.50. I also got it on Amazon on CoSRX's official store. This also contains those three sizes of hyaluronic acid. So it basically does the exact same thing as far as getting it down into the deeper layers of your skin. They also both have the exact same texture. So you'll see the Thirst Trap one. It's kind of a thicker serum. They have a little bit of a sticky sort of tacky feel at first before they actually sink in. And um, the COSRX one feels identical to the Wishful. Really like I don't see a difference with it at all. And I also find that both of them hydrate my skin in the same way. Really the biggest difference is that the COSRX doesn't have the peptides while the Thirst Trap one does. But at the same time, I do use other anti-aging skincare that contains peptides. So I don't really necessarily need it to. I think if you're just looking for a really great hyaluronic acid serum, you really can't beat the COSRX one because it just feels so nice going on your skin. I mean, both of them do, to be honest with you, but this one is so much less expensive. So anyway, guys, those are my skincare dupes that I have for you. Again, if you'd like to see more of these, I'll link my other skincare dupe videos down below in case you wanna check those out. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun putting this together and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also if you like dupes and saving money on makeup makeup and beauty products, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you all so much, and I will see you in my next one. Take care, guys. Bye.